My name is Angela Furiga, and I'm here tonight to talk to you about the Skyward Student Information System. Now, unfortunately, uh, because I'm going to be working with live data, I am tied to the podium and my keyboard. So uh, I will not be as quite as dynamic, but hopefully you'll enjoy the information. All right. Uh, to get to the Skyward Information System, or the Parent Portal more particularly, which is what you're going to use, uh, you start off by clicking on a browser. Now they recommend Chrome. I found Firefox works well. I haven't had any problems really with any of the browsers, but they do recommend Chrome. Now, uh, first step is to go to our website at DeerLakes.net. At this point, in the Quick Links section, there is a Skyward link. Now, once you click on it, this is what it will look like for you. And at this point, you can save a uh, shortcut to your desktop, or you can continue to access it through the website if you prefer. Now, for tonight's demo, Mr. Dave Campos was nice enough to allow us to look at his information. The reason I'm doing it this way is so that you see here exactly what you will see when you log in. If I do it administratively, there are a few extra steps, and it tends to be a little confusing. So I want to thank Mr. Campos for allowing us to once again, use Matthew as our test dummy. Shh. He doesn't know. So you'll put in your username and password and sign in. Now, you will see this screen. It is based on pop-ups, so if you don't have pop-ups allowed, you'll see this screen. Interesting thing about it, though, hit retry, and it will blow right by. <laughs> okay, so this is, well... No, get, a, get the family access over on the right. Yeah, Dave. Over on the right. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. You won't get that. Yeah, you won't get that's where you'll start. That's where you're going to start out. I could have gone in as an administrator anyway because we had to take a couple extra steps to get here. But this is the general interface, the general parent interface. Uh, on, the, on our right side of the screen, you see upcoming events. Uh, anytime a teacher puts any item in their gradebook, you're going to see it in real time here. That's one of the nice advantages of this system. All grades, all events are real time. I know last year in our last system, a lot of people had to wait for the weekly updates to get the new information. This will happen real time. Uh, and it's listed by student. We can see Monday, Matthew has an assignment. Can't really see what that assignment is too much right there. But if I click on it, I see a little more about it. Uh, and I can go and see the assignment details. And I can see that it hasn't taken place yet, but when it does, I'll know the grade, whether it's missing, basic information about it. Another nice thing about this system is it's based on communication. So anytime you see a teacher's name, it'll bring up their email address. You click on that, you can type in a subject, a quick note, send email, and you're communicating with the parent directly that quickly. Uh, so you see something, you have a question about, you have access immediately. Now the calendar, you can see it in this list view. You can also come here and see a month view. Now the nice thing about this calendar is right now I'm looking for all students. I said I was only going to abuse Matthew during this, so I'm just going to go down to Matthew and leave Emily out of it. And now I can see only those items that pertain to Matthew. Uh, if I want to see what's happening in the entire month, I keep them both up there. If I want to see my individual students, I can then bring them up individually like we just had. Uh, one feature when you do log in for the first time, if you haven't, is the 2015-16 verification. 
We can see that Dave has completed his verification for Matthew and Emily. What this is, is we're hoping that this will take the place of the emergency cards that you fill out every year. Uh, you, are a, a, you will be a big part of whether we can replace them, because what we're doing right now is we have this verification open until October 9th. What that means is you will go in, the first time you go in, in the middle of the page, and Dave has already done it, but in the middle of the page right here, you'll see you have to verify your information. You click on that, and you'll have the opportunity to list your... I'll show you the information you can play with in a little bit, but it's all the information that's on that emergency card. If enough parents fill this out, if we get a good enough response, then we're going to be able to do away with those cards. But if only 10 to 20 percent do, then there's still going to be a need for those cards. So please, once you leave here, spread the word that they need to go into Skyward and they need to verify their data, if nothing else. But it's got a lot of other good reasons to be there. A couple things on this home page I want to make you aware of. We looked at the calendar already. In the middle of the page, you will see general information from the school. All right? This is stuff, this is called posting. When the school sends you a message in Skyward, you're going to get it two ways. You're going to get an email, and it's going to be posted to your portal. This is individual for you, your buildings, and your kids. If you don't have a kid at, at uh, East Union, you're not going to see the information about the East Union picture day. Um, so it's just general posted information. The calendar's available on the right. It's also available over here, just a little bit of redundancy, depending on how you want to look at it. You also will have access to your student's gradebook. <laughs> Now, one interesting thing about the gradebook, most of these things give you an all-student view. But if you try to do that in the gradebook, it's very it's selected for the students. So if you can't get to a gradebook, make sure you're only looking for one student. Bring Matthew back up. Now, here are, if you look across the top, T1 is term one, term two, Semester one, term three, term four, semester two. You can come here, change the options to show only the current term. Oh, okay, it is, it is doing that. Uh, the reason that this grade is over here, the technology education, is they grade on a trimester, not on a semester, not on a nine week period. So the grade will appear on the second nine week report card. So that's where the grade is appearing in this interface. When you get a first nine week report card for these kids, it will show these grades, but not that one. Because this will show up in the second term, because that's the time period that that class is over in. All right, so I'm going to take him back to his view all terms. And right now, all you're seeing is the nine week grade. So if I want to see what makes up this 87 that Matthew currently has in science, I click on it and it's going to show me all of the assignments that add up to it and what his individual grades were on each. It will also show when he was absent during that time frame so you can see if an assignment has been excused, why it might have been excused. From here, again, I've got a question about this science grade. I click on the teacher, come over, and from within that grade book, while I have that idea fresh in my mind, I can send an email out to that teacher. Now, you can also look at, you saw in the grade book that uh, Matthew had missed a day. We go in here and we see the same thing. Friday the 25th, uh, and it was a lawful absence. Dave was nice enough to send an excuse in. <laughs> All right, student information, just general information about the student. Now, after you go through your verification process, not before, but after, you can still make changes to that information. You come up to the student info, and there are certain fields that you can edit and certain fields that you can't. Uh, we go into family address. The address is very important to the district. This tells us whether you belong to the Deer Lake School District or not. So we don't allow changes to be made 
without district verification. If I want to change Dave's address right now, and I tell it to save, it's going to act like it let me. But if I go back in, and notice now there's a little star next to it, I open it up, and I see that this information is waiting for approval by the district. The district got the information you changed, but they have to make a verification before it becomes live in the data. So I'm going to change Dave back. Undo change requests. Right now somewhere there's a confused secretary. <laughs> But there are other fields that you can change without district authorization. Um, you can change your own phone numbers. We trust you with those. We know, we know if you want us to contact us, you're going to give us good information. There. And this should save us with people that move phones and don't let us know on those cards. You, know, you shift your phone, your phone number gets taken over by somebody else. I make a call at 5 o'clock in the morning. And I hear from somebody in Kiski that they don't have a kid in Deer Lakes, they've never had a kid in Deer Lakes, because your number now belongs to them. This should save us from a lot of that. So you can change your own phone numbers, you can change your own emails as needed, but just things that are important to the district in terms of our state reporting and making sure you are a Deer Lakes resident are stay the purview of the district. We'll let you change it, but we're going to verify it. You can come here, you can look at your student schedule. This will give you the order of the classes. And again, you want to see more about the class, you click on here. You want to see more about the teacher, email the teacher, it's all there. So there are multiple ways to get to the same place. Discipline is available for you to view, but only discipline that has been, for lack of a better word, adjudicated. You don't get to see accusations, you don't get to see it standing there pending. Once it's been taken care of, once the action has been taken, then you will see what's going on. Now, luckily for Matthew, it's still early in the year, but I'm going to take this a little break. Right. Early in time. <laughs> test scores, right now, uh, we don't have any in the system. By test scores, we're talking your PSSAs and your keystones, the, the major tests in your students' lives. Uh, those will be here. Teacher conferences right now is not lit up, but what that will allow you to do, especially those in the elementary schools, when they set up teacher conferences, when the window becomes open, you can come here and you'll get a notice that it's open. You can come here and schedule that conference with your teacher. You don't have to play a paperwork back and forth. You schedule it, they confirm it, you're good to go. Academic history is a little moot this year because it's our first year in the system. But long term, down the road, You'll be able to look at last year's grades here, the year before that, once that information gets put into the system. For right now, the only information we have is midterm one. These are what are called posted grades, permanent grades. Uh, we post grades at midterm, and we post grades at the end of the nine weeks. Those are static grade reports that you will receive. Uh, for those of you that have elementary or secondary students, you should receive your first report, your midterm report, tomorrow. These grades were just posted this week. That's why they appear here. For the elementary students, we had a little bit of a, uh, a mix-up with getting that interface correct. You'll be seeing your posted grades and your posted comments the beginning of next week. We're hoping for Monday, Tuesday uh, in that time frame. But you will be getting your progress notices. They'll be much more comprehensive than what you're used to seeing in the past with the two little, you know, Johnny does good. You know, that's kind of what they were in the past. Uh, what they're going to be now is you're going to see a grade posted for each class, and there is a capability for teachers to put free form comments in there. Up to 250 characters about your student individually. And I did notice that especially our elementary teachers took full advantage of that 250 <laughs> characters. So you will be seeing a little bit of that. Attachments. Uh, once we post the progress notices and post the report cards, you'll still get them the way you always did get them, but they'll also appear here in the attachment section. So you lose a report card, it's always going to be available for you here. Uh, health information is always scary to show parents. Um, I've already pre-checked Matthew and found out that he is out of compliance 
on two of his vaccinations. <laughs> now, in, in Dave's defense, I do have to say, the paperwork is sitting on the nurse's desk right now, but she's got a big pile, so you may see some of this. When you look at the health information, uh, you may see that your vaccinations are, appear to be out of compliance, but you know they're not. Give them a little time, they'll be there for you. That's his mother's fault. <laughs> Okay, now this login in history is kind of neat from a district point of view. I do want to show you this for this reason. Uh, the district also has, the principals of the district and the teachers also have access to your login history. So when you tell, when they ask you, have you gone into Skyward, have you checked their grades? Don't lie. <laughs> because they know. Not only do they know when you went in, but if I click this view area, it will walk me through exactly what you did that day. You went from this page to this page to this page to this page. So if a teacher asks you if you're going into Skyward and checking grades, chances are they know the answer before they ask. So be honest. Okay. Now, this is the, the parent portal as it appears. Uh, we lit it up for parents about three weeks ago. So if you don't have your login information, I'll be available directly after this meeting to get it for you. Uh, my office is right outside those doors by the library. I'll set up in there. You can come by. I'll give you your, your login information tonight. Now, we opened it up for students. Well, what I did was I opened it up. I waited for the big wave of, you know, I can't get in. That took a couple weeks. Then I opened it up for parent or for students, excuse me, earlier this week. Now I'm getting those from students. Hey, I can't get in, my password, whatever. Next week, after that wave washes over, we're going to open up a, a, an application, an app, for Skyward. So you'll be able to check it from your phone directly from an app or from a pad, whatever you have. Uh, once we open that app up, uh, you'll get a post here in your web interface. You'll also get an email telling you that it's available and where it is. And we will probably post it on our web page also next to the Facebook and all the other apps that are on our uh, what page currently? I. Uh, that's really all I have to say about Skyward. Uh, I would hope that you do use it. Uh, it is a great tool. It's much better than what we've had in the past. Last year, a committee, a large committee of stakeholders, looked at the top eight products in the country, and this was the product that was decided would be the best for Deer Lakes. Uh, it's got. A, the, you see, the Parent Portal it is an excellent tool. Please do use it whenever you can. If you have any oh, if you ever do have any questions or concerns about it, you can always get in touch with me through the school. Uh, I'm available on the web page in the technology section. I give you my information is afuriga at dlse.k12.pa.us. But now you're all out there going, well, how the heck do I spell Furiga? So it is on the web page. Uh, please do contact me if you have any questions or concerns about it. Thank you.